Good morning. This is part three in our series of uh, videos on the restoration of a 1951 Pontiac radio out of a 51 Pontiac Chieftain. And this video will deal primarily with the restoration of the vibrator. And uh, once that's done, maybe if there is time left in this video, we'll fire up the radio and see if we can get any kind of a sound out of it before we commence with the complete overhaul. The vibrator is the heart of the radio, or it certainly is the heart of the power supply. It's a 6-volt input vibrator. It's got the four pins, the 12-volt with three pins. And um, with a 6-volt input, the uh, voltage is stepped up in the power transformer to about, uh, in this particular radio anyway, with to about 240 volts AC. The 240 volts AC is fed to the plates of the OZ4, and it's rectified at the cathode of the OZ4 to approximately 240 volts DC. And then it's fed to the filters and throughout the rest of the radio, throughout the various circuits. Uh, what I did with the vibrator was the first thing that I did was I got the contacts spread apart. Either um, I used a little pick like this and then I used some uh, of the old uh, deoxid and sprayed the contact points. Being very careful not to bend this reed at all. And um, once I got the contacts sp uh, sprayed with the uh, deoxid, I took this burnisher that uh, my boss gave me years ago when I was his assistant at a radio station, assistant in engineering at a radio station back in Rochester, Minnesota. So I guess I probably had this burnisher for oh, the better part of 42, 43 years. I slipped in here between the points and I, ge I gently push. See if you can see what I'm doing here. Yeah, okay. And I burnish the contact points. I did check them with a jeweler's loop and they weren't pitted. So just kind of lightly like that. And then uh, I've already done this. But I, because it's kind of, uh, it can be time consuming to adjust the contact points so I get a good spark. So it's more or less what we would say um, is trial and error. And I've got the Suncor fired up, and we're going to just briefly test it here before we go over to our vibrator tester just to basically show you how this operates. It's got uh, four pins on it. One is blank, one is ground, one is the 6-volt input, and the other is the output to the um, power supply. The large pin here is ground. I don't want to leave this connected very long. Is I don't want to burn the surfaces of the points. And one of the others will give us our spark. The smaller of the, of the uh, two sets of pins. Obviously not that one. There we go. So you can see the reed vibrating back and forth. The vibrator is working. Now, I will introduce you to this handy little device here which every radio shop that serviced car radios had. This is a uh, Sencor vibrator tester, vibrator adapter. And as we do videos, you will learn that I have uh, partiality to Sencor test equipment as well as RCA and uh, Hickok. This is the uh, four pin for the four pin vibrator. This is the three pin, most commonly used 
with uh, 12 volt systems. So uh, there were vibrators uh, that were used in the old Buick radios of the mid to late 40s that were 5 pin. This will test those. But anyway, we can test ours here. And I'm just going to insert it into the proper holes. And we'll walk over to the Hickok and test it. Okay, this is the Hickok 538. It's all set up. And we test using the 6SN7 setting for 6 volt and 12SN7 for 12 volt. And I believe there's also uh, another um, uh, option as well. Yeah, you can use the 6SN7 or the 6AX4 and similarly for the 12s. There you go, you got a pretty good view of it now. So, tester is all set up. Let's set it uh, into the tube socket and see what happens here. Got a good glow on both LEDs and this little table here tells us uh, what to look for. If we get a, the same brill like we did, it's good, uneven, questionable, and uh, before I started working on the vibrator, we didn't have any lights. So that pretty well concludes our discussion of the vibrator power supply in this uh, Pontiac radio. Somewhere around here, oh, there it is. This is the can that the vibrator goes into. And it has the little muffler inside to hide the noise because these can get quite noisy. And all I simply did was to take a sharp wire cutter that's been used for cutting wire that was probably too big for it. And uh, so it the jaws are pretty well mangled. So it makes a pretty good device to um, peel back this edge. I'll insert the vibrator in to this can and uh, seal it back up and hopefully it'll continue to work for us. I'm going to conclude right here and um, I think uh, do a couple of things with the radio, insert the vibrator and the OZ4 and when I come back we'll give this radio a brief test to see if we can uh, get any stations on it. I often like to uh, work on our fire up radios before I do a complete rebuild. Just the uh, same goes for amplifiers too, just to see how it sounds. And uh, that way I know that uh, once I overhaul it, if it doesn't work, it's uh, something that I did, and uh, it happens occasionally. And uh, then I can go back and make the correction. So, uh, be back in just a bit, and uh, see you soon. I signed off and um, <clears throat> had a couple of thoughts that I think I should pass along to you of importance. You go to all the work of restoring the vibrator, and... Uh, you get in a little bit of a hurry and you neglect to do the pins. Now these pins are rather tarnished with age. So you just take a little sandpaper like this and you do each pin as best you can so you have good contact down in the socket. Brighten them up as best you can. You're not going to get all the black off but you'll get most of it. And then you'll have good clean contacts. You don't have to worry about driving down the road and all of a sudden the radio quits. And they will if you go over a bump and you've got dirty contacts on any part of uh, tube sockets, the vibrator sockets. If you've done some soldering and the, you've got a cold joint or didn't complete your soldering properly, it'll come back to haunt you. And hopefully, 
it'll be uh, in a radio of yours in your vehicle rather than in a customer's vehicle particularly if they're taking it down to a car show we have a big car show in Wisconsin this weekend internationally known at Iola a lot of great vintage vehicles there it looks pretty good um, and I did do a pretty good job of peening this over. It's important that once this is in the socket, if it has to be removed, you don't pull the can and, and uh, leave the vibrator in the socket because then you're looking at taking the cover off the opposite side and pushing it back out through. So I think this will stay. The other thing we're going to do is I'm going to use some mineral spirits and a pipe cleaner and go down into the vibrator socket. This isn't this pipe cleaner diameter is not quite the size that I like for the big pins. The larger set, but it should suffice. like that. A few little reams down in through the holes and you should be good to go. And if you want for uh, an extra measure you can take a little of the Deox 5 that we've been using throughout the early part of our restoration and just shoot it down inside. By the way I do all my tube sockets this way with uh, mineral spirits and pipe cleaners and then I give the uh, socket individual pins a good shot with the Deox 5. And it seems to work pretty well. I'm going to try to insert this. Uh, it'll be a tough fit and it may take two hands. So. We'll set the camera down for a second and uh, I'll face my pins in the proper way and hopefully it'll uh, go down in. Well as you can see the vibrator is finally in place, good tight fit. Down around the base of the vibrator you can see the little pins that hold it in place, the little leaves that hold the case in place. Uh, it's a bit tough once you have the can disassembled and you have to peen all that metal back around it. It's, it's kind of difficult to uh, get that vibrator to go down in the first, second, or even the third time. Once in a while you have to uh, get down in with a screwdriver, as I did, down in uh, the... Uh, you can't see it very well but there's a leaf right here that was binding just a bit. So I got in there with a screwdriver and I was able to push it back down. One thing that I do do, which is helpful in replacing vibrators and sockets, is to remove the bottom cover over the power supply portion, the OZ4 socket, the vibrator socket, and there you'll see the buffer condenser. All I do is line up the pins with the holes and then I maneuver it down into the socket. As I said, sometimes when the vibrator can has been uh, taken apart, as I took this apart, it's hard to peen that metal back the way it was according to factory. So it's a little difficult and you do have to get in with some kind of a pry and work on one of those leaves that usually hangs up, pull it back a little bit, and then the vibrator will slip right in. So with that, I think we'll move on and go to uh, part four of our restoration of this 1951 Pontiac car radio and see you soon and straight ahead.